Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best Regional Accent. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Well, howdy there, Hal. Hi there, Mark. I did the same one as you. I should have done a different one. I realized it. The second I said it, I I was like, I can't. I got to get out of the mirror. We're very good at at sketch bits like that. Yeah. And yet here we are. (laughs) I I didn't expand it at all. There'll be plenty of accents in this episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, We're going to be. We should let the people of the world know we're going to probably be insufferable by the end of this. It's going to be bad. But this is Eric Fusco's fault who suggested this topic. Thanks, Eric Fusco. Yeah. And we're not going to be alone. That's right. In being insufferable accent nerds for the next hour. Our special guest is a, is an actor, a comedian, a writer, uh, and the voice of Mercy in Overwatch, among many other voices. And uh, who better to talk about regional accents with us than Lucy Pohl? Hello, Lucy. Oh, hello. Yes, hello. <laughs> That's, not, uh, <laughs> That's Australian. That was That's great Australian. That was accent. a great Australian. <laughs> I, I legit looked underneath the table because it sounded like you were just like crawling around on the floor around us. Yes, hello. That's, that's what I. That's what I do mostly. That sort of mouse like- sound. Yes. Oh, hello. I'm I'm under your table. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. So there's like a little bit of German in there. Which makes sense because you yeah. are you are German. You were you were born in Germany, and then when did you move to the U.S.? It's uh, not my fault. Uh, yes, I was born in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was eight years old when we moved to the U.S. and I spoke no English. Well, at all. B- before we get to uh, the U.S., then. What was it like growing up in Germany? Because you come from a, a theatrical family, yes. Yes, yes, yes. What was it like? Uh, yeah, you know, I remember the berries being delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's a woman after my heart right there. Like, you know what I remember from childhood? This food thing. <laughs> yeah. And um, I was obviously a huge David Hasselhoff fan. That was my big thing. Of um, course. <laughs> my parents were not into that. My mom's a singer and, um, you know, kind of serious about that. And uh, I wanted to hang up a poster of him in my room, and she wouldn't let me because back then my parents slept in what, like, during the day was my room, was their room, at night. And so she w- she said, I'm not sleeping under that pervert's face. <laughs> I don't know why she thought he was a pervert. No idea. <laughs> yeah. Poor Hasselhoff, He's man. not He's a pervert. Trying to make his way in music and theater. <laughs> Did Jekyll and Hyde over there to much aplomb? <laughs> I think it's because, like, little kids loved him. That's why she thought he was a pervert. Um, (laughs) And I just remember... Like that pervert Mickey Mouse. Exactly. (laughs) I remember in that moment, um, I said, I will always love David Hasselhoff. Always. And that's why, um, just to spite my mother, I'm still a fan. (laughs) Have you met him? Have you you ever... Because you've worked a ton. Yeah, no. I have not, and I'm kind of glad I haven't. I have a letter that I wrote to him when I was uh, seven. Did he I send op- it back, or you well, never? Sent no, it? I never sent it. That would be hilarious if he sent it back. It's like no, thank you. <laughs> it's written on Ghostbusters stationery. Okay, awesome. <laughs> which is awesome. Yep. And it says, "Dear David, my name is Lucy. I am seven years old. Although I am a girl, you are my biggest idol." <laughs> Oh. Which I think I was ahead of my time there. Yeah, yeah, and right. Then, People and can then cross say, genders with their idols. Right, exactly. And then I say, my biggest dream in life is to hang out with you and the entire Baywatch team. Please oh. send me an autograph. I will always love you. And then it just, there's a bunch of hearts. And then it just says love on the bottom in English. That's pretty great. Because the letter's in German. Oh, the- <laughs> That's right. Is that to make sure you're like, you're like at the last minute where you're like, oh, look, I know he's been here a while, but I don't trust that he learned German, so I better write love in English. <laughs> yeah. It's like written in a different colored pen, too. So it must have been a last minute thing. I panicked. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Love, David. Love. That's all that matters. 
<laughs> these hearts, you with hearts are a thought. universal thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you you moved here at the age of eight. Yeah. And uh, how did you go about learning English? What was that process? It just I just learned it. I just learned it. Um, I made a bet with my dad. I I didn't I couldn't believe that I wouldn't would be able to learn English because uh, that's not something that my little eight year old brain could understand. I guess. Yeah. And um, I lost. And <laughs> um, I th- it took me about three months, but I did get in you trouble. You learned a whole language in three months. Yes, a that's whole. Impressive. That no, that's how simple English is. There's <laughs> 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 only like five words. You just kind of rotate them around. Yeah. Um, but I did get in trouble for cursing, like using bad words. Really? And what was it? What were your go-to's? The, uh, our audience is just going to hear beeps. Yeah, uh, like sh- obviously. Yeah. Um, I think it was mostly sh- actually. Okay. I don't, so you didn't get I don't too think bad. I said the F word. And um, this girl, Isha, I remember, told on me. This is my revenge now. I'm that revealing little... this story. Yeah. Isha's on blast. <laughs> and then the teacher called my mom. And my mom had to go in and he said, your daughter has been using very bad words. And my mom said, well, we don't speak English at home. So where do you think she learns it from? <laughs> Sick burn. Oh, that is that is perfect logic. Well yeah. done, mom. That's right. <laughs> My mom's a Jew, so she can talk her way out of any situation. Oh, you know? yeah, that's our superpower. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> how do you not, like? It's crazy that you have like when I hear you speaking, I hear like the the slightest bit of just like a cadence that feels like germanic just because i have uh i had relatives who are also german so i hear like a little bit of it but it's like a very clean accent how did you and you grew up in new york how do you not have a new york accent i think i can turn it on and turn it like it comes out when i'm around my friends that i grew up with in new york see now I, yeah now i'm hearing it now yeah when you're exactly. talking about it yeah 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 it, it, it can come out or if i'm not in new york and i i, I want to like make people stay away from me and and make it known that i'm from new york <laughs> and that they shouldn't <laughs> mess with me then i'll start you know talking like this a little more and like It'll come out a little thicker. But yes, yeah, so I can clean it up real nice as well. It's funny because people say I have all kinds of accents. Some people mm-hmm. think I sound Russian. Some people think I sound Puerto Rican. Someone asked me if I was Swedish the other day, which is also <laughs> funny because I'm like 5'1 and I have dark hair and it makes <laughs> no sense that I would be Swedish. And yeah, I've gotten all kinds. Some people have, somebody asked me if I was from Arizona, which made no sense at all. Well, that you, all. your thick Arizona accent. Exactly. Yeah. So, but I, I, yeah, maybe it's that I think I was a cactus in my previous life. That's what it was. That's probably <laughs> it. And you know those cactus. cactus, they just absorb, absorb, <laughs> absorb. Exactly. Um, you said that you would, uh, if you would throw on your New York accent if you ever needed a, uh, don't mess with me. Are there different accents for different situations since you are this chameleon of it? Yes, I do think so. You know, um, what was pointed out to me a while ago by someone was that whenever I'm calling on the phone and I'm speaking to someone that I want to appease, my voice goes up a little bit in pitch Mm -hmm. and I start to kind of like talk like more like this, you know, and it's like a little bit more of a California, like pleasing and like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, that would be so nice. Thank you (laughs) so much. You know, <laughs> when you just want things to go smoothly and you just don't want any confrontation at all. Yeah, come to California where there's never been a confrontation. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything's smooth here in uh, California. When did you realize that you like started to collect accents? Because I assume as a voice actor, all of us have accents that are sort of in our Rolodex. What age were you like? I, I, do you have like an obsession with accents like I do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Completely. I've always been this way. I used to do like little skits for my parents where I would play the German chancellor, Helmut Kohl, who had this like <laughs> a voice like that was like as if you had like a permanent congested nose. Like he would talk like this. That was kind of like the way he talked. And um, kind of the way I sound right now. <laughs> that I was like five or six when I did that. And then when we moved to New York, like I went to the United Nations International School. Oh, 
So I grew up around kids. <laughs> you said that, you said that uh, like it was prison, Hal. No. Oh, no. It's, oh, she, no. She's tough as nails. <laughs> you know what? I, <laughs> there's a part of that, but then I've also – well, first of all, I thought of the TV show The Critic where they had – because his kid went to the UN school and there was a Klingon kid there. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Jesus. But also just the idea of being surrounded by accents sounds yeah. like heaven to me. Yes. And mm. then I grew up my, – my grandma spent a lot of time with me when I was really young and she is Romanian. And she had a very thick Romanian accent in German. So she kind of talked like this. Like this was kind of the way she spoke German. Like Dr. You know? Ruth. Yes, kind of, but a little not so German. More right. like a little more mel- melodic. And, like like uh, Dr. Ruth if she was informing you that you were a werewolf. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, a werewolf with no testicles. Ooh. Um, very big difference. <laughs> Huge difference. <laughs> and so I realized, though, I've never been with a man that didn't have an accent. And I, most of my friends have accents. And so, yes, I'm completely obsessed with accents. What's your method for learning a new one? What? How do you attack it? I usually uh, need to hear somebody speak it in some sort of context of a conversation or a story or something happening that I can kind of, I don't know, internalize, I guess. And then that character becomes kind of synonymous with the accent and then I understand the accent. That's kind of how my brain works, I guess. So you're, you're creating, you're not just, you know, looking at the international phonetic alphabet and figuring out where the vowels and the diphthongs go. Oh, you're no, creating no, a no. character. No, I can't do that. No, that's, oh, now I'm Mrs. Doubtfire, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. We had to learn, uh, we had to learn in school. We had to learn the, uh, the international phonetic alphabet. Yeah. Uh, third year and then fourth year our dialect class they just threw it all away and the teacher that we had did not use the ipa at all and we were all very annoyed this <laughs> spent, college yeah this was in college college yeah so we think that they would talk to each other about something like that wow. did that professor like go here's the ipa and then just tore it up that's for suckers <laughs> yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna watch deliverance you're yeah gonna well there was this. there was that fir- <laughs> there was that first day where he was someone was like okay so how do we deal with the ipa with this and he's like oh we we don't we don't use the ipa in this class uh-huh. and every one of us looked around at each other like Are you kidding me? We spent (laughs) half a year. This is a conservatory program, people. (laughs) That's hilarious. Figure it out. Talk to each other. Yeah. Oh, did you have Terry? Terry taught you that? (laughs) I can't believe (laughs) Terry fooled another class into learning the international (laughs) phonetic alphabet. What a bunch of suckers. (laughs) Hey, you know what? He's the sucker now. Joke's on him because I don't remember any of it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Terry, rest in peace. Oh, God. <laughs> that was what killed Terry. Did we just kill him? We did. We killed yeah. Terry. It's oh okay. God. His death okay. rattle had a Youper's accent from the <laughs> Peninsula of Michigan. <laughs> so should we dive into some of these accents? Yeah. Why don't we work our way? We never do this. Geographically, uh, we'll start where you landed on the fine shores of this country, uh, I assume through Ellis Island. I don't know how it works now. Of course. Of course. Yeah. You yeah. had the, the rucksack, be... the rucksack you came across on the boat. In a little submarine. It was yeah. a submarine. Oh, so, oh, so <laughs> you, yeah, snuck you took in. a U boat. Yeah, it was, it was Dust Boat. Yeah. You know, Dust Boat. You came over in Dust Boat. Yes, we came over in Dust Boat, obviously. <laughs> Uh, just just uh, before we dive in, Mark, uh, mm-hmm. for our listeners, because we do have international listeners. Yes. And this is going to be a study in North American regional accents. We're not going to go to what the accents are like in your area, be it Australia or England or or those are the two places I know of where people listen to us. <laughs> uh, I will give a shout out to the very brilliant uh, Siobhan Thompson, who if you need to learn a UK dialect from any region, she has posted a video online that is great and long and she uh, goes through all of them. And I was looking oh. at this and in looking for this week and studying some of this stuff. And I, and then I was with you and I thought, Oh my God, there's no way we can cover every regional. Uh, <laughs> d- there are 40 in the UK alone and there are dozens and dozens here, but I think yeah. we're going to, we're going to wind up sticking with the big ones. The, the question we have to answer right now is which ones would we consider contenders? Well, obviously in New York, of course. Yeah. Uh, though New York has specific dialects to different regions within New York. Can true, you, true, uh, true. can you talk a little bit about that, Lucy? 
Uh, no. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. What am I, a dialect expert? Um, uh, pretty sure it's dialect expert. Yeah. Dial expert. So I Look, actually. You were a political satirist <laughs> in Germany when you were in kindergarten. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. You're right, actually. You've just opened my eyes to a new thing I'm going to put on my resume tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were no there were no kids in my kindergarten class that were like, here's what it would be like if Reagan had to go potty. <laughs> None of that. None of that when I was a kid. So Though, yeah, you're- quickly, I do love just to throw in, I do love that it was a five year old's version of political satire and it was Helmet Cole, but he just has a stuffy nose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, the answer uh the way Reagan would sound is he would go, Well, I have to go again. Anyway, uh, go ahead. Nice. Thank you. Um, It trickles down. Um, (laughs) So let's talk about – we're talking about New York. So wait. I have to say one – I have to say one thing. Sure. Please. I have actually received a check in my lifetime Mm -hmm. for dialect coaching for the movie American Hustle. Oh, wow. This chick – calls me that I met at some audition or some acting in some acting class or something years ago. She goes, Hey, I know you're really good with accents. I got this gig in Boston, um, coaching these actors for the callbacks for this movie. I'm not allowed to tell you what it is, but would you do it? It's tomorrow. I can't do it. I have to, I have to cancel. I have to find a replacement. And I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. You know, I'm, um, I'm a hustler. I don't say no to anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah. I say yes. And Thanks then for it, being on our show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it dawns on me that like I'm not qualified at all and that I have no idea what I'm doing and that I don't know how to teach people how to like speak in an accent correctly. So I go online and I, while I'm on the bus, I'm like online and I'm looking up all these like, New York accent and like how to explain to someone. And it turns out it's for like smaller parts and it's all these actors from Boston, but the movie, it takes place on Long Island. So, but they're shooting it in Boston. So they have Mm -hmm. to sound like they're from New York. So this guy has this line and something like, why don't you park the car outside? Mm -hmm. So he's like, pack the car. (laughs) I swear to God. (laughs) It really was. Oh my God. And so I go, no, no, no. No, no, car, car, like A W, car, like that's like more New York, like like longer, like aw, oh, like car. He goes ca. I go car. He goes ca. I go car, and then I just I gave up and I went. You know what? How about you say automobile? And he went automobile. And I realized sometimes when you're trying to do an accent or a dialect, it's just about avoiding certain words. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah, are yeah. like dead yeah. giveaways. There you go. That's brilliant. Yeah. You know, and it's also like it, that speaks to the challenge of going from a Boston to a New York accent, which are both like very thick. And also there's a lot of difference around Boston and, and Massachusetts, just like there is in the different boroughs of New York. It's right. so hard to break. You're not starting from neutral. You're starting from drive and trying to go to like full reverse yeah. and step on it. So there's no – it's like – it's so difficult to break those things. I had a Philly accent when I was a kid. There are recordings of me. Like, I'm here to ask my mom a question about (laughs) whether she's going down the shore. (laughs) Did you go on Nickelodeon and ask a question on a game show? I did. No. Did you have the accent back then? I was on Nickelodeon, a little show called Kids Court. Look it up. The (laughs) clips are online. I didn't have an accent by then. When I was five years old, the first thing I ever did on any stage or or television was a local programming block they did on NBC called Double Muppets Hold the Onions, where they would show two episodes of The Muppet Show Ah, back to back. I love it. And it it was the interstitials between the episodes were hosted by a comedian whose name is Bob, uh, I cannot remember his last name. He's a guy who has worked a ton. And it was at a a local club called The Comedy Works, the Mm. the owner of which was a friend of my parents. So he's like, we're going to have kids come up and tell jokes, you know, see if Hal wants to come up and do it. So my mother coached me on a joke and I go up and I tell a joke and there's like a horrendous Philly accent throughout the whole thing. Like, the man goes, <laughs> he went out and a guy came to the door and uh, he had a parrot and he knocked on a door and the parrot was like, who is it? And it is the law. Lo- I-, I wanted to tell like a very quick joke, like a knock, knock or or set up punchline, my mother gave me what felt like a Bob Newhart phone call routine that <laughs> was like, like nine Joker. minutes long. 
Sounds like yeah. the Joker a little yeah, this bit. This is the Joker. <laughs> Turns out yeah. I'd imagine this the is whole your origin thing. story. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't stop laughing. But you can see I, I had a shirt and tie on at, that I didn't want to be wearing. They a little suit. Aww. And to get me through it, my mother was holding up the sweater I was going to be able to change into. So as he's through to the episode, I, love I start taking off the jacket and tie. Like I can't stand to be dressed like this any longer. <laughs> You're oh still that way, Hal. Oh, my God. But – yeah, I had that accent and it was, it was very important that I not have one. I don't remember how I, how I lost it, which mm-hmm. is kind of odd. But to have that accent and then go into a Boston accent or a Southern accent, it's so hard to shake. You, you have all these habits that you have to undo and then learn new habits to See, go into. So I think it's a lot more difficult. I feel like the more similar they are, that's what makes it difficult. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. an, a, a Kiwi dialect and an Australian dialect are sometimes difficult to differentiate because they're fairly similar. You know what mm. I mean? I yeah. feel that way about New England. Like with there's there's a crispness to it. There's that – there's. The, you know, Boston's got you, – th- there's just a few things you're going to do differently, but in New York, you're going to do them down here. You know what I mean? But everything kind of moves at the same pace, whereas <laughs> in the South, you know, everything kind of slows down. There's – it's not yeah. just the vowels. There's a cadence to it too. Yeah, so yeah. For me, if I can find a Northeastern cadence, you're just kind of layering things on top of it mm. to get to a specific point on the map, which yeah. makes sense. You know, the Northeast was connected by railroads and the South was connected by horses. Right. <laughs> ridiculous by the way it was bob nelson thank you who was I the couldn't... comedian yeah how did you know that did you just look up double muppets hold the onions i feel like you and uh you i i had a hunch it was bob nelson because i feel like you uh have talked about this before i have and only every show you guys do uh, no privately come on <laughs> Lucy, and also I... all all 19 of those episodes listeners if you can find those episodes where how <laughs> mentions double yeah, you... muppets hold the onions one punch in your card for each episode you find, and then That's you get right. a free bagel. That's right. <laughs> Did you get Bob Nelson? It was Bob. Yeah, wow. Bob Nelson, the great Bob Nelson. Yeah. Oh, my He's God. a very nice guy. Who was fantastic in Brain Donors, the yes, he was. Uh, update of the Marx Brothers' Night at the Opera. Mm. Yes. Loved it. That's right. Anyway, so while we're in the Northeast, how do you want to do this? Do you want to, like, pick an accent from each of the regions and then have them pitted against each other in the end? Do you want to just talk about them individually, go around the country, and then pick a couple that we think are contenders for prettiest or most fun or most interesting? Or what do you think? I, I like the regional approach to have them like broken into regions and then have the regions right. face off. What do you think, Lucy? And then have like winners from the regions. I mean, the thing is, is that everybody knows the New York accent is the best accent right. in the country. <laughs> Well, so, by the way, I, it is, it's gonna be hard I am so clearly to hearing pretend, yours. pretend, you know, but sure, yeah, we can do that. Uh, <laughs> it's not just the accent, it's the attitude too, isn't that's it? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. And that I think is part of it that there are two, I think that there are at least two distinct accents in New York, which is where the way you speak, which is very Manhattan. It's fast, mm. it's clipped, it's a lot of T's become T's. Right, that's true, yeah, very um, true. And, and, and it moves along at a pace, you know, walking through Brooklyn, everybody's got more of a, it almost feels like uh, it's halfway to Philadelphia. Well, kind of. I mean, you know it's I funny mean? because I, it's funny because it's, I, I feel like it's, that's a little bit of a myth too, because mm-hmm. now well, fan, Brooklyn's fancy now, like, well, but, but also like I'm now, talking old school. Well, now, but you're kind of talking, um, like Italians, right? That's like a very Italian Brooklyn accent. I guess that's like, true. The, the Puerto Ricans in Brooklyn sound very much like the Puerto Ricans in the Bronx. You know what I mean? Right. So for me, I don't, I mean, I guess it's true. There, there is, that is more like the, the Brooklyn accent is a little bit wider and a little mm-hmm. bit like more of the AWs. I think for me, the biggest difference in New York, like in greater New York sort of is mm-hmm. between the city and sort of Long Island. You know, Long Island right. is really where people start to talk differently. Right. You know? We spent where, the summer in Montauk. In Montauk, exactly. And where the Z's all sound like this and it's like just like you want to punch them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Which almost no! sounds like it's no. fading into New England. <laughs> Uh, exactly. Yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah. Very true. Which, very at, true. At, at what point do you get to where like, well, now you're a m- hole and I want to punch you in the face? It must be the lobster then. 
<laughs> yeah, it's if you can get get past the oysters in Oyster Bay, get all the way out to where the lobsters are. Yeah, you go from lobster to lobster. Lobster. Like, <laughs> sure. like tra- as you head north, that o, that o gets longer and longer. Well, yeah, I had a cousin who who's from New York. Was my cousin's uh, husband, and he would always call my mother Sheila. Instead of Sheeler. Sheeler, yeah. <laughs> Instead of Sheila. Like that, like Angela true. and Moner from Who's the yeah, Boss? That's yeah. kind of a Brooklyn thing, though. Yeah. I yeah. would say. That's a Brooklyn thing. But, you know, I grew up around so many kids that grew up in Manhattan and that have the thickest New York accent that you would think are straight out of Brooklyn or, like, oh. straight out of a parody of Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. You know, that, like, really talk like this. Like, they're like, oh, my God, what the hell? This and that. da 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 You know? Yeah. So, I don't know. Sometimes I think that, like, the difference between the boroughs is a little bit of a myth. I think it's more like where, like what people's backgrounds were, mm-hmm. you know, like the Italians yeah. speak it's in a certain yeah. way. And Well, and that's New York is, is a kind of place where that is constantly in motion. You know what I mean? Like Definitely. Yeah. you think about Brooklyn now and it's, you know, pockets like, you know, Williamsburg and Park Slope and and then even like Long Island City up into Queens. Like they're all populated with people who talk like hipsters. You well, know what I mean? And they're all have, from Ohio. That's yeah, why. exactly. There's a there's a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like our two big con- or our three arguable uh, big contenders in the Northeast right now or four. Would be New York, the Manhattan, New York, the everywhere else, New York, <laughs> the Boston accent and the uh, Philadelphia accent. Would would that be correct to say Baltimore? I don't know how much different I knew mean, like Baltimore, Baltimore, like Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. 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 Go down Baltimore, hon. It's it, very sound, it sounds a lot like Phil, like Pennsylvania. But there's also and then you got that the chicken kid from out, uh, you know, on the other side of New York State. Uh, yeah, I like yeah, chicken. Right. You saw that kid. <laughs> well, when, when you get to Central New York and like Buffalo, then then yeah. it gets almost uh, midwestern. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's midwestern and Canadian. I had I had a roommate yeah. from Rochester in college, and his girlfriend, who was also from Rochester, would always come in and go, "Hi, hell!" Like she added <laughs> so many <laughs> so many syllables to my name, and she was lovely. But her but her saying like, "Hi, <laughs> hell!" <laughs> It was like just too many, too many of them. It's like, do you want to get your hat and your bat and go, we'll go hunt down a cat? Like, it was, <laughs> I remember like, when we were set, my friends and I were 17 and we wanted to go on a road trip because they had gotten their driver's license. I was 16, they were 17 and they were allowed to drive. And we could not believe that the Niagara Falls were in the state of New York. Like somehow we (laughs) didn't know that. (laughs) We were like, what? And so we drove up there and um, we camped out and we met these people from Buffalo. And like we had never met people from Buffalo really because, you know, we were city kids. Mm -hmm. And they kept calling each other crackhead. Hey, stop it, crackhead. <laughs> we were like, what is wrong with these people? We were, we were, it was like we were in a zoo. We, we were so fascinated. We were like, mm-hmm. wow, these are, we can't believe that these are New Yorkers. You know, it's so true. It's, they, it's, uh, it's so funny. Like talking to someone who grew up in New York, it seems so different because like I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow. And when you grow up in te- – being from New York sounds almost like being from the Emerald City <laughs> where like anywhere that you go outward from there, like you leave New York City and you're in a field for a while, this right? Especially true. if this is your first time driving. You, you've gone from the center of the universe to – I mean it's where the United Nations and the stock exchange and all the world's money and power are centered. And yeah. then you go outward from the center. Uh, growing up where I grew up, th- that was always like the center was always somewhere else. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I used to think I grew up in New York so I can live anywhere, you know, mm, right. and and I found out that is not true. If you grow <laughs> – growing up in New York means you can't live anywhere else yeah. because nothing <laughs> compares yeah. You know, city what do you mean? Wise, what do you mean? Is. I can't. There's not a bodega open on <laughs> exactly. the corner at three o'clock in the morning. Are you kidding? I tried to live in Germany after high school. I was like, I'm going to go live in Germany and, and, you know, find my roots and school is free and it's going to be great. And yeah. you can smoke and drink on the street. And I moved to Berlin and I would get dressed at like 2 a.m. And my roommates would be like, where are you going? And I'd be like, I'm going downstairs to get a Red Bull. And they'd be like, 
where? There's nothing open. I'd be like, what? And it took me like a good two months to like get that into my system. Also, I love that that's your go-to is it's 2 a.m. I'm going to get a Red Bull. (laughs) Like you might have some sleeping disorder. Oh, I'm starting to feel tired. I better wake myself so my eyes never close because that's only two in the morning. I live in New York for God's sake. (laughs) Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Oh, exactly. it's 2 a.m. I'm going to go see cats. The most New York thing I can do. And then I'm going to go have pastrami. That, that's why it's the greatest city on earth, right? Look, yeah. yell at a cabbie. A New York accent does say, don't mess with me. It does. I you agree. know, that's a thing that it says. Uh, a New York accent. When I was a kid, I went and visited New York City with my mom when I was 13. And uh, there was this very nice guy with a very thick accent, and he comes up to us. We're we're totally lost in Greenwich Village because all the streets go in a million different directions. None of them yeah. curve, and yet somehow it's the most confusing web of insanity. Yeah. So we're trying to f- navigate it, and this guy's like, "Hey, what are you looking for? Hey, come on with me. I got you." <laughs> so he's showing us all around, and he's pointing out buildings. And my mom was like, "You know, I was so worried that New Yorkers were going to be mean." Hmm. And this guy says, nah, New York is a great. You just know if we like you or we don't like you immediately. True. And so it was clear that I liked you. <laughs> so I'm going to be nice to you. In the South, you'll be nice to me and I'll never know uh, if you like me or not. True. A hundred percent true. A hundred percent true. New Yorkers are so friendly, really. Such nice people. It is. It really is a, a, a dialect that to me imparts honesty and friendliness. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. And also a weird sort of like the, like there's it you think of New York City as the most erudite place, but there's a weird folksiness to it. Yeah, totally. So true. That's so true, yeah. I think that is something that that it holds in common with a lot of working class accents because mm. it does feel like a working class like listen, I don't have time for crap. Yeah. You're going to know if I like you or I don't like you. It's similar to like a Boston accent or a Philly accent in that way. Like yeah, Philly, yeah. Philly people are actually pretty friendly unless you are rooting for a different sports right. team. <laughs> that, then it's open season. Uh, but- listeners, if you have any punches left on your Hal Apologizes for Philly <laughs> card, uh, you can turn that in now for a Stretch Armstrong that looks like uh, Dolph Lundgren in Rocky Fork. Um, but do you think that that is specific to the northeast because it seems like as you move to a more working class population the accents generally get thicker and stronger Mm, Mm. maybe there is one accent that we didn't discuss that's in the northeast and i do think new york is the winner i think so Uh, too as long as we're looking for we're looking for something that's fun to do universally recognizable Mm -hmm. like sort of world around right Mm-hmm. Isn't that isn't that sort of like what we're looking? That's what yeah. is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The main accent that like you can't get there from here. That I listened to an album that my friend Craig had of some <laughs> main comedian who looked like he. I guess he dressed like a guy who was either going to catch lobsters or had just caught a bunch <laughs> of lobsters, and you come up and tell stories, and you would listen to it and go, I don't know what the hell this guy is saying. It makes no sense. And then the crowd would laugh. He'd go, well, but that's the way it is. And they'd go, oh, this is great. Or they would go like, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and there's something to that that feels like you can't get a read on that person at all. Oh, that's, that's great. True. Like, that's how you feel? True. Yeah, best day of my life. Yesterday, I uh, I was crying myself to sleep, but now I've <laughs> never been happier. Like, that's that joy of the cadence thing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's such like a – that's such a – a flat sort of wave to ride on that one, as opposed to other ones, which are like waves that are all over the place and you will get slammed around a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah I, sometimes I feel like it also has to do with the amount of space people have mm-hmm. in the place where they're from. Like it kind of, you know, I feel like, you know, New Yorkers kind of talk fast and, and because that's the environment we live in too. You know what I mean? And then when you yep. go down south or you go out west or even Maine, like it, it slows down and it becomes a little, I guess they have more time because they have more space. <laughs> yeah. They have that, more time to talk because they're taking physics. longer steps. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. There is, there is a truth. There's, uh, there are a lot of areas of the country where there is no urgency at all. And to that finish comes a sentence. In the dialect. Yes. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and, and being, did you hear that? By the way, it, the, the New Yorker was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To finish the sentence. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I was even, too slow. even <laughs> Pennsylvania, how <laughs> is too slow for a New Yorker. D- does the Yinzer uh, accent, does that count as a Northeast or is that more of a Midwest? Because what, Pittsburgh Yins? is so close to Ohio. The Yinzer accent, the Pittsburgh Oh, accent. that's a Pittsburgh. That's, uh, I feel like 
like this is all now we're moving into like the far eastern ends of the Midwest. Mm. Okay. Yeah, because then we're like, yeah, I'm going downtown to pass a sweeper, and it's like a really <laughs> weird mix of it's kind of Philly, but also like v- very like Slovak, like sl- all the right. Slovakian and yes, that's uh, true. And Polish people who w- who found their way there. The accent is so heavily steeped in that, but you get fl- like I I had to study it for an audition. And I, all of our mutual friends, Darren DePaul was like, you should read for this. I'm going to hook you up to send something in. And I went to study it and it was so confusing because there are enough notes of Philadelphia in it huh. that I was getting lost and having to remember. Yeah. Like, like it was, it was really hard to See, I told you, man, it's when those accents are close, when there's a, yeah. the, when there are things that are the same and things that are different. That's when they get so hard. That's when you just yell. <laughs> you just scream and then you know i just well, said automobile over and over again yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. automobile automobile call me i'm the voice coach i have a w- <laughs> one solution fixes all problems just say automobile <laughs> <laughs> hello and welcome to the web session with lucy pole world-renowned dialect coach <laughs> consisting of one minute just say automobile over and over again. People are like, huh? It works. It works. <laughs> um, that'll be $500. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, so before we leave the Northeast, I want to give a, a little goodbye shout out to uh, Boston, who did not win. We didn't talk much about, but that's okay because I spend so much of my waking life nowadays speaking with a Boston accent. Do you? Uh, yeah, I do for a show I'm working on. Uh-huh. Uh, and I have been put on blast by a uh, friend of the show. And Hal knows what I'm going to say because it drives me crazy. <laughs> and he knows how like, oh, I was like, oh, that was so good. That was such a good one. Uh, <laughs> by our friend Q who listens to the show. What's up, Q? Uh, who referred to the character I play, Father Chuck, as the pastor of Our Lady of the Meandering Accent. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so That's upset. Awesome. Like, oh, that's, that's awesome. so good. So what has become a, uh, my, my Moby Dick is, uh, <laughs> is not going to win this round. Take that, Boston. I do love you as a city. You're wonderful. Yeah. Um, but I think you're right. I think it's New York City. It's definitely New York. Because I feel like we've, we've talked a lot about New York and it's definitely, it is the, it's on the Mount Rushmore, if not on the top of the Olympic pedestal in this one. Why don't we take a brief break? Yes. And when we come back, we're going to see who can climb up that pedestal and take New York City off of it. We got some regions to, uh, to, we got some contenders in the Midwest. We got a couple of contenders in the South. Out in the West, we've even got uh, some. So let's give it a shot. And we've got All a right. mouse under your table. Ooh. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, lovely little mouse. Climb up here. Yes. We'll be right back. Here's a thimble of. Yeah. <laughs> it's a symbol of cheese. Mice love cheese. Oh, throw to the throw to the break. All right, fine. We're taking a break. Nearly two decades ago, Commander Data sacrificed his life. The greatest discovery is also about Star Trek Picard. Jesse Thorne won't let us stay on the network unless we do all the Star Trek series, and so here we are. Doing a show about maybe our favorite Star Trek character of all time. If you're excited to watch the new Star Trek Picard series and you'd like some veteran Star Trek podcasters to watch it along with, we're your guys. Sorry you're stuck with us. The hell are you doing out here, Picard? Saving the galaxy. So subscribe to The Greatest Discovery. You can find it anywhere you find podcasts. Or at MaximumFun.org. Hi, I'm Renee Colbert. I'm Alexis Preston. And we're the hosts of the smash hit podcast, Can I Pet Your Dog? Now, Alexis. Yes. We got big news. Uh Uh-oh. Since last we did a promo, our dogs have become famous. World famous. World, like, stars on the Hollywood Walk. Okay. Second big news. Mm -hmm. The reviews are in. Mm Mm-hmm. Take yourself to Apple Podcasts. You know what you're going to hear? We're happy. It's true. We're a delight. A great distraction from the world. I like that part a lot. So if that's what you guys are looking for, mm-hmm. you got to check out our show. But what else can they expect? We've got dog tech, dog news, celebrities with their dogs, all dog things. All the dog things. So if that interests you, well, get yourself on over to Maximum Fun every Tuesday. And we're back from our break. Yes. It was very long. <laughs> oh. Trust us. We always break for the exact amount of time that you're listening to commercials. We yeah. check our phones. We don't yeah. just keep talking. Yeah. We definitely don't. And we don't just roll into this. Not Why at would all. anyone do that? No, all it's right. madness. It's insane. Crazy. So, uh, so let, where do you guys want to go next? You want to go into the Midwest or you want to move down south? 
Well, I have to say, you being from Tennessee, Memphis mm-hmm. is one of my favorite places in the country. Yeah, it's beautiful. You got the it's Tennessee just, River. It's the music is great. The music is great, and yeah. it's such a weird, cool, yeah, American place. Yeah, you know, there's so much that I feel like if America was a cake and you would slice it open, Memphis would be right there. You Ooh. know, like the perfect slice of America because it, it has, you know, obviously it has Elvis and it mm-hmm. has mm-hmm. the food and it has the heat and it has the music, but then it has that extremely painful and sad side of American history with Martin Luther yeah, King. Yeah, with the death of Dr. King. Yeah. And every, I, the feeling there, I, I don't know, the feeling I got there was so unique. I don't know mm-hmm. why Memphis really like struck me as this really special and the, and the people I have to say were so friendly. I mean, yeah. you know, I say New Yorkers are friendly. We are friendly in our own way, but we're rough around the edges. But people are friendly down there, like properly friendly. Like, I mean, that's that Southern. Like they know how to do that, you mm-hmm. know? That's that Southern style, you know, that uh, that yeah. deep Southern hospitality. It is a way of life. Yep. My mother is from Memphis, and she uh, will tell me frequently that she entri- has tried to instill – uh, Southern graces in me. It, it, she succeeded in some and did not in others. <laughs> bless her some, heart. Uh, yeah, and some Southern <laughs> grace, bless her heart. Some Southern graces, I think, uh, should be, uh, should be embraced and some Southern graces, I think, should be left, uh, in the dustbin of history. That said, I think Memphis feels like such an American city. Yeah. Because it, it, it ha, it, it, it this is gonna, this is gonna make me sound like a, like a, a nihilist, but I don't mean to. It feels like a real American city because it is past its prime. Huh. Mm. Yeah, I you get what, what you I mean? mean. I totally get it's what you mean. It's not yeah. far Completely. past its prime. And it's, yeah. it's racial strife was like, if you're the city that killed Dr. King, you know what I mean? You, um. Yeah, it's a little so it, bit. It has a, it has a past to reckon with both good, with great music coming out of there for decades and bad. Yeah. It's a little bit like what oh, Cuba in a way, like the, the flair that Cuba has with the old timers. The old 50s cars, yeah. And the communism that's kind of like this like, idea from a past world that we don't really. Yeah. They're um, like, know we kind of made it work here, right guys? And yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Well, it, you guys have great cars. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but Memphis has great donuts. I have to say, Memphis donuts. Oh, you know, I never really, uh, I never really took, you know, took note of the donuts. <laughs> yeah, me. all the what? time visiting, all the time visiting my grandparents when I was a kid, we would never go get donuts. We would always go get ribs. That was the big thing. Oh, oh, yeah. What are these donuts called? I, I don't Gibson's. Know. Gibson's donuts. That's right. what they're called. Yeah, like the guitar. Mm. Hot yeah. tip. Yep, I like absolutely. That. But yeah, so the accent, so is the, would you say that Memphis has a different accent than Tennessee, a very different accent? Well, there's a bunch of different accents in the South. Right. Much like there are in the Northeast. There's, uh, but I think they sort of divide up into like low country and Delta. Uh, so mm. like the, the low country of South Carolina and the Delta of Mississippi, there's a different accent there than there is in Appalachia. Right. Or in the more, or in like the Ozarks. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, absolutely. There's, and I think a lot of it is that hard R versus that soft R Southern. Mm. And there's a soft R, you know, that foghorn, leghorn kind of, I say, I say, boy, that kind of. <laughs> yep. The, the, that's the low country and that's some of the Delta as well, but, uh, or most, most, you know, Mississippi Delta, everybody talking Mississippi, they got that sort of yeah. soft R drawl. Coastal Carolina has the more erudite, fancy version of right, it. Right, right, right. You know, a little slower. Uh, but then you get to East Tennessee, where up in the Appalachia, that's a hard R. That kind of like, you know, yep. you think about Arkansas having it, mm. you think about Oklahoma having it, that, and it goes all the way out to Texas. And then Texas sort of spreads things out a little. You know what I mean? It's sort of a, a yeah. mishmash of mm. all of them as you move west. But yeah. I think the real distinct ones are the soft R Southern of the Delta, the fancy soft R Southern of the Carolinas, and then like that hard R mountain sound. Mm. I love that. What sings to your ear? I love a soft R Southern. I, I love an Apple. I love an Appalachian that Dolly Parton accent. Not just for the vowels, but the way her S's are, the way her S's sort of sit up here. Which is <laughs> that, that that whistling which is sort kind of, of thing. Yeah, yeah. There's like a whistling, uh-huh. but that's part of the whole region, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's regional or if that's just her voice. 
Well, I, I've met a fair, her you boobs. know, my wife's from the South. Yeah, I th- her boobs her mess boobs with me. Her boobs are pressing oxygen. up yeah. again. Yeah. Exactly. It's her esophagus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> her boobs are constricting her esophagus. Yeah. Her, one of her boobs hit her in the teeth, knocked all her teeth out. Those are all <laughs> dentures. <laughs> it was right before she was doing it in oh, my no. Tennessee Mountain home. So she was like, oh. sitting on the front porch on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> She turned into the gopher from Winnie the Pooh. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, I I think I like the te- like. My wife's from North Florida, like an hour south of Georgia. So, so there's a weird like mix of accents there, mm-hmm. I, and it it's all flat land. So there's no like high like I, I don't know if it's because of people sort of migrating there from different areas of the South or what, but it's, it's such a mix. You know, Je- uh, my wife, Jennifer, her accent is different than her sister's accent. Mm-hmm. Really? And they are, they are three years apart. Huh? And her parents have slightly different accents from one. another. She has a very Dolly Parton accent. Ah, she does now li- we're getting more. to the bottom of this. She, that's, <laughs> my wife is Dolly Parton. I'm here to, <laughs> yeah, to reveal it to everybody. Carter Parton uh, Rogers is actually the, uh, that's, the Parton that's part. Right. Yes, the Parton part is, is for real. But yeah, she, it, Jennifer has the kind of accent where people try to place it. There is, it isn't easily distinct. They're like, you're, where are you from? And they, they usually guess North Carolina. Huh. Which is not. That seemed because it's, it's an Appalachian kind of sound. Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of yeah, Appalachian kind of sound, which I that might be why I'm attracted to it. I also like the Texan version though, just because it's so brassy. And I feel like if a if somebody from another country, if you ask them to do an American accent, they will mm-hmm. generally do like a Texan Southern accent. Is that, yes, that's, exactly. You know, I think the Texas accent might be a perfect amalgam of all of the Southern dialects. Because there's that haughtiness of, you know, the <laughs> the coastal uh, aristocracy, which, you know, southern coastal aristocracy uh, that that might not wind up being the winner because um, much like in 1861 through 1865. But then that that sort of mountain hard scrabbleness uh, of that of that like that Appalachian sort of thing. And it all kind of. Gave way to this big Texas sort of like half and half kind of, you know what I mean? Like there's that mm. big LBJ. Mm. LBJ had that kind of sound where it's like, he kind of sounds like that soft R thing, but then he'd slip in these little bit, you know, you know where he's from. Because they do enunciate quite mm-hmm. clearly. Oh, yeah. Like this, yeah. the Texans way more clear. They, they speak more clearly than the like real down south kind of. Like some people I met in Memphis, I couldn't understand a word of what they were saying. Oh, it's like which that. Which is probably uh, why I loved it so much. That but, show Swamp People, they uh, they subtitle it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in Texas. <laughs> I was a little insulted by that. In Texas, I feel like people speak very clearly, like almost over yeah. enunciated, right? They like, want yeah. to be very clear. Yeah. Yeah, that like, oh. And come, slow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't you want to go down? Even if it's sped what? up, it still feels like. <laughs> what was that? Hang on a second. Don't you want to go down Let's to the it. cotillion or wherever? That like, was awesome. That was. I'm gonna of- have some pie. <laughs> like, hey, hey, Wolf, your sheep's clothing didn't quite fit. <laughs> well, I never. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I do never. declare, I'll yeah. be over here by these hoagies. You ain't gonna find me that, but that is like uh, in some of the southern dialects. Yeah, those O's, those yeah. like. I have to say, one of my favorite people on earth is this Chinese American guy that I know that is from Alabama, but speaks like Tony Curtis. <laughs> he says Amazing. like what? Well, I I I reckon I. I reckon I can come over there in just half an hour or so if you like. I can be right. I can be right over. I sounds reckon. so gentle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, like he he has this like total mix between this like weird southern <laughs> accent and then this like time warp <laughs> to like nineteen forties movies. <laughs> it's it's the most amazing thing I've ever heard. I've never been to Alabama, but that's how I think everybody talks there. Yeah, let you know what. 
I don't want to ruin it. Just leave that to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everyone in Alabama talks like Tony Curtis. As as a German uh, immigrant, though, or as an immigrant, I have to say the Southern or the Texan accent is so pleasing to my ear because that's what we want Americans to sound like. Oh, you know what I mean? My. Like it's like. It's like you go to Germany and everybody's wearing lederhosen and eating black forest cake. You're yeah. like, yes, this is what I want. <laughs> or everybody's in a turtleneck and doing weird S and M. Yeah, um, sure. Art. Now it's time on Sprockets when we dance. <laughs> Art, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I I think that's that really does. You make a great point in that. Yeah, that. It's, it's pleasing. It's, it's what we export to the world. Like, yeah, yeah. we're going to export the idea of an American accent. Because, like, I think about, you know, someone, uh, someone in a, you know, like a, a cliched character coming to the United States for the first time or doing an impression of an American. Uh, the words, regardless of what language they speak, the words will either be forget about it or howdy. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I went to Wyoming like, yeah. and I posted something on Instagram and I said, howdy from Wyoming. And I, all these people commented and they were like, we don't say howdy. That's not how we talk here. I'm from Wyoming. And I was like, oh my God, calm down. Yeah. I mean, Easy. honestly, like, Easy deep West. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, you do. Everybody says howdy. And also, you should be happy that I know where Wyoming is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, be, before we leave the South, it feels like Texas is kind of coming away with it. What about the Cajun accent? What about oh, the accents of New Orleans? Yeah, down on oh. Creole kind of gumbo sort of thing. That's great. Of course. That's great. Yeah. It's, it's such fun. a great, like, it's, that is like the melting pot. Just like New York is like a mix of 900 different accents. Yeah. That's, That's true. New Orleans as well is like it's such a mix of different, just weird, like Canadian, French Canadian, uh, the Deep South. Yeah. Who knows? There, there might be some Russian in there. We don't know. We don't. <laughs> Lots know of Germans there. went down there stuff. too. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. You said you mentioned something just now, uh, Hal, about it being a melting pot, and yeah. Lucy, you said something earlier that I love, and I'm, I'm gonna be honest, this is, we, we did start over this recording because I was using the wrong mic input, like a doofus, so I apologize everybody if I'm, uh, if I'm repeating something, but you said something in one of our two recordings a little while ago that I love is, uh, because you're a New Yorker, uh, New York and America is a melting pot, mm. uh, specifically the city of New York. In that case, uh, and in that instance, a Nigerian accent, a Chinese accent, a Russian accent, a, a British accent, a Colombian. These are all American accents now. Exactly. And I love that idea. Yeah, totally. I just wanted to make sure that that made it into this recording as well. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I think I, that's really, really great. But it, it's true, isn't it? I mean, yeah. yeah, they are American accents. And that's what is so great about this country is that people with – you know, I, I I went out with a guy from Greece for a while, and he moved here. He spoke, he didn't speak English well, mm-hmm. and he got he was like a structural engineer, and he started working at this big company. And he was never, ever, ever discriminated against because of his accent. Nobody cared. Like that was not a thing in Europe. That's a big thing. Like if you want a like a position and a job like that to have an accent in the language in the native language. That's not something that would be so easy to deal with, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that that is what's so great about this country is that, yeah, all those accents are American accents. And what I love is that I see friends that didn't grow up in America, you know, from other places, and they can't tune into accents as fast as people that are from here because they're not used to people speaking their language with an accent. Or being around so many people that mm-hmm. speak their language with an accent, you know? So I think that's what's so great about this country that we celebrate that. Amen. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should augment the name of this episode to native English speaking, English native, uh, American regional dialects. Sure. Uh, and I'm it not going to do that, like- but we have it on the record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want to re record the. Yeah, it, no, but guys, but you know what I mean when I say <laughs> best American re- – you know what I mean. <laughs> that said, and because – look, we can talk about Chicago and the Midwest and Fargo is fun and 
uh, was brought to the world by the movie <laughs> and uh, the Blues Brothers brought Chicago and their, their flat vowels and their flat land to, to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it feels like if we're talking about the big winners, it sounds like we've got our two titans in the ring and that's New York and Texas. Would that be fair to say? I mean, I, I do not I do to not. I, I worry about getting accent. short shrift, but yes, maybe that's fair to say. New York yeah. and uh, uh, Texas, yeah, I guess the Cajun accent is very fun. Though I didn't mean the to Cajun get you accent also. is pretty amazing. The, the California accent, where everything just feels kind of slower. Yeah, and but you really hit those R's out, and your your R's. And or you nice... just talk like this. Like what's this? This yes. is a California accent too. That's it's almost valid. like that. Like New York has Lake Manhattan and Tully. everywhere else. <laughs> California has L A and San Francisco, and then everywhere else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's yeah, also yeah, yeah. the heavily Latin influenced. I know a lot of guys in California who have that sort of like flat California thing where it's kind of borrowing from languages that don't have diphthongs in them. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we forgot how the Hawaiian accent. That's pretty good. Oh, that is pretty good. Yeah. And I Puerto Rican. Puerto Rico is part of the United States. Oh, Puerto Rico I know. is part as, of the United We all wanted to said, be Puerto Rican growing up. We called yeah. ourselves Germanicans. <laughs> <laughs> because Wait we were like we were like German girls going to this um international school mm-hmm. and we all talked like this. Like we would be like, yo, what the hell? My mom keeps calling me. She's like blowing on my phone, yo. Damn. And then we pick up the phone, we'd be like, Hallo, ja, ich komme heute Abend zum Schnitzel essen nach Hause. Gut, tschüss. <laughs> <laughs> can you speak German with a uh, Puerto Rican accent? Um, ja, natürlich kann ich Deutsch mit einem Puerto Ricanischen Akzent sprechen. It's just about the melody, isn't it? Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. There's a great musicality to that, to yeah. that accent. Yeah. yeah, and there are beautiful like the Fargo accent. There's something to that mid that oh yeah, like we're really straightforward with you, mm. and we're you know mm. we're not we're we're never gonna tell you anything that's not true, and we're really sorry about it, and we're it almost like leaks into Canada. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. That that is a very like you know we talk about the sincerity of a New York accent, at, like that it, that you just can't. There's something you can hide in it. Mm-hmm. That if I hate you or if I love you, you're gonna know, and you're gonna know very quickly. <laughs> yeah, with the, the Midwest, it just feels like. They always like you. Like mm. it's that accent is like George <laughs> McFly before he punches Biff. Yeah. We're just like, oh yeah, well you know, sure, whatever, uh, whatever you want is fine. If you, you can, if you want to rob my house, you can. I'll I'll leave the front door open for you. You can come right in and take all my valuables, and you can even have my dog if you want. He's real nice. He won't bother you. He doesn't bark, and when he does, he I taught him to say uh, an apology, which he'll do for you. Like there is that that sort of feeling to it, which is. Which is nice and quaint, but it also, like, don't you want that accent to get mad? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I want. I don't. There, there are a lot of. I think quaint is a great way to put it. There are a lot of quainter Americana accents, but look, I don't want an accent that's gonna hover around a nice gentle six. I want ones and tens, baby. I want. <laughs> I want some swing. But here's the thing. I want a right? Texan telling you, uh, telling me they love me, and a Texan telling me they're gonna kill me. <laughs> I guess, but here's the thing. A good accent, a real strong accent, no matter mm. where it's from, it's always going to be good. Yeah. It's always going to yeah. be yummy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yummy it's is always a perfect gonna be word for it because, <laughs> it, yeah, a good accent makes me think their home cooking is going to mm, be great. Delicious. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You want to eat every, it. Regardless of what we pick, we love all accents and every accent. Yeah. Exactly. They're all beautiful. Yeah. They are beautiful music to our ears. And Philadelphia even. We just Even don't like when people from Ohio move to New York and then want 7-Elevens everywhere. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's what bodegas are for. 7-Elevens don't, don't have cats. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, them do. Texas and New York? Does it, is, does yeah. it feel fair to say that those are our... I, if we I did not give fair. your region, uh, if we gave your region short shrift, I apologize. I don't know what a Pacific Northwest accent sounds like because, uh, everyone moves. If they don't move from Ohio to New York, they move from Ohio to Seattle. Mm. Um, oh, you know what? I'll tell you what. If you, if you didn't hear the accent that you have that is in your region. Ooh, I love where you're going. Record a message in that accent telling yeah. us why we're wrong and then tag all of us on Twitter. Yes. It there so that we can enjoy your accent and get an earful from you. Oh I my think God. That is fantastic. Please do this. Please do that. Please do that. So between Texas Please and New York. Please do that. Also from the mouse. 
<laughs> and for the yeah, please, that mouse requires feedback. <laughs> this tiny little mouse has been under here this whole time, being so good. <laughs> yeah, I even gave her a thimble of cheese. <laughs> yeah, in all different <laughs> accents. Yeah, cheese. Uh- Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> That's the automobile of foods, isn't it? Ooh. Exactly. It is. It kind of is. Yeah. Like, you kind of have to work if you go, like, cheese. Like, yeah. Yeah, some people say that. Some people do say that, but not many. Cheese. I'm yeah. going to say you it. I think Jennifer, uh, Jennifer uh, could add a couple of extra vowels into the word cheese. Somewhere. Could, but she, I think she just says cheese. Yeah. I think she does. Chai's. I'm going to start Jeez. saying it like that from now on. I, <laughs> I really want a Chai's burger. Excuse me, how much is this Chai's? <laughs> that almost sounds like California vocal fry. This That's chai. true. That's because I'm a little sick. Chai's. Oh my God. <laughs> I love Chai. Um, all right, we got to do this, y'all. We got to do this. We got to figure it out. New York or Texas. Oh my God. Do you want to take a temperature? Uh, we'll say one, two, three, and then I'll say what we think it is. We will all simultaneously say what we think it is if we're all on the same page. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh, one, two, three. Texas. New York! What? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow, Mark, I did not expect you to say Texas. <laughs> Why'd you, you say Texas? I was Because I, you because, can take the boy out I of knew, the cheese. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. No, because I knew you were both going to say New York. <laughs> and I thought I'd throw a wrench in the game. I think it's uh I think it's it's I think it's New York City. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the game is rigged. It's okay. Yeah. It's rigged. I would, it's I would rigged. like, I would like to <laughs> give a, give a shout out to Texas. You made it really far, but it's the first accent, uh, you think of when, when someone thinks of America is a New Yorker. And I think that really was sort of a, a linchpin for it. Yeah. For the win. What's well, both? Yeah. It's a New Yorker, like a Southern. Yeah. Like they're, they're the two, uh, the, the New Yorker. Can I deliver this verdict, Mark, as the cab driver I had that took me to 30 Rock one time? <laughs> Is that okay? Yes. Okay, should we all say it at the same time what we think it is? Sure. Okay. One, two, three. New New York. York. (laughs) People of the world, I've seen all sorts of things in my neighborhood. I've seen Spider-Man punching a cop. I've seen two hookers fighting over a cheese sandwich. But the one thing I ain't never seen is an accent better than the New York accent. This is an actual voice that I heard once. <laughs> I recorded it with my phone because I couldn't believe this person existed. Oh, my God. I thought it was a David Johansson character. It sounds Come exactly life. that's who it is. That's oh my, my God, dad. I was trying to find it. Niagara oh Falls. Gosh. Lucy, it's your father. Of course you're going to learn a, 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 a proper uh, a English. You're not just going to speak German. That's not what we do here. We're in New York. Oh my, oh my god. god, it's so good. It's I hope so you're good. feeling hot, 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 Hal. This is where all the Hamilton happened. Remember, oh. everybody loves Hamilton. It's such a big hit here in New York. Oh my god, somebody <laughs> write a show for this character, please. <laughs> <laughs> I move all my gloves at the fingers cut off because I'm <laughs> from New York. He's I a can't. cab driver who gives advice, but the advice he gives always ends in New York. The it's New just York tourism accent advice. Being the best accent in the world. <laughs> here's what you got. Look, I know you and your wife are having troubles. Here's the here's the thing you gotta do. You gotta talk like you're from New York. <laughs> exactly. Say, listen, I want to work it out with you, <laughs> and then you will, because it's the greatest regional accent in the United States, New York. <laughs> I got. Meet I have me. this. I have this crazy neighbor that kind of talks like that a little bit. He. I saw him the other day. I go, "Hey, what's up?" He goes, "Well, this idiot is starting a war." I go, uh, <laughs> "I go, all right, yeah." Um, and I, I say, I'm like, well, you know, it's uh, basically always about like weapons and oil, isn't it? And he goes, I don't know why I like engaged with him on that level, but whatever. And he goes, <laughs> he goes. Yeah, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't even have underwears. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it should be pluralized because you do say a pair. <laughs> underwear. <laughs> Patrice, where's my underwears? I'm going to New York. I got to go get my brother who drives a taxi cab. 
Also, where does this guy get his underwears from? That's what I, I want to know. From a bodega at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right after I get out of my second show in the cats. Yeah. The stage play, not the movie. <laughs> Good luck trying that in Germany, lady. Yeah. <laughs> Axed and dancing. Yeah. <laughs> I turned uh, to Tony Danza. That's what it was. He sounded like a Tony Danza. Like, uh, no, he, he sounded like exactly Angela. like David Johansson. Yeah, that, that once you the second you said Scarlett that, that's all that I heard. Scarlett Johansson. He sounded exactly like, like Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> hey, Captain America, don't throw your shield near me. It might hit me in the back of my head, and then I'll crap in my underwears. Uh, exactly, your underwears. <laughs> there you go. It's the best accent in the world, hands down. Nothing better. There you Nothing go. Better, Lucy Paul. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. What a We're- joy. In addition to everybody, all the trillion people who play Overwatch that hear your voice, and I know you're constantly recording new things for that. What's going on? Where where should people be going? What should they be watching and reading and listening to of yours? Go on my Twitter, Lucy Pole Comedy at Ooh. Lucy Pole Comedy, or go on my Instagram, You Love Lucy. The letter U Love Lucy, L U C I E. All my shows, all my live shows, stand-up stuff, all that stuff is on there. I post about it. Stuff coming out soon that I cannot discuss presently. Ooh. Uh, Ooh, and, um, it's exciting. Yeah, you know, exciting stuff. But yeah, go follow me on the social. Just like follow me. And like I like like post stuff and like I might delete it later, but like if you're like fast enough, like you might see it or whatever. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Everybody take the challenge. Cause you do. You love Lucy and we love Lucy. And thank you for being here today, Lucy. Thank you so yes. much for having me. This was super fun. That only leaves us now to say, hey, guess what? There are more topics to discuss. So please reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets. Check out the Maximum Fun subreddit or email us at We Got This Podcast at gmail.com or go to our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash We Got This Podcast. Talk about the regional accents you love. Let's have an accent party. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman for our score and theme song respectively and thanks to you the people of the world for letting us go down a very silly memorable memory lane and geography lane we had a really great time and thanks for letting us bring Lucy on and Lucy you were a blast thank you thank you thank you for Hal Lublin I'm Mark Agliardi for Mark Agliardi I'm Hal Lublin don't worry everybody we We got got this this. we got this MaximumFun.org comedy and culture artist owned Audience supported.